Hello and welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. This one is also going to be on DAX. My name is Mitchell Pearson and today in this video we're going to be taking a look at functions like previous month, previous quarter, previous year and how they pertain to something like parallel period. In fact, they're the same thing. We're going to take a look at that. So as always, I already got a pre-baked example on the screen. And what we're trying to do with previous year is figure out what is some metric, some measure for the prior year, right? And so right here, you notice that I have a measure called prior year total sales. And that measure is correctly giving us the total sales from the prior year. But I'm not using the same period last year function. I'm not using date add. We took a look at those in another video that we did. And there's a pretty big difference between what I'm using here and what I'm using there. Even though right now, up until this point, it looks the same. So let's take a look at the DAX first, and then we're going to take a look at what's going on here and why it's different. So in the DAX that we've written here, you can see we're doing calculate. So we're saying evaluate an expression. The expression we're going to evaluate is total sales for the previous year. So up to this point, when I'm teaching a DAX boot camp, when I'm doing one on one mentoring, a lot of times I get mixed results, right? Hey, we want to go get the results for the prior year. What are we going to use? Sometimes I get same period last year. Sometimes I get previous year. More often than not, I actually get previous year, surprisingly. But that's not necessarily what you always want. It really depends on what you're trying to do. And so at the year level, it looks exactly the same. But if I come down and I'm currently looking at a visualization that is a matrix here, so we can kind of drill down and drill up, I'm going to expand down one level in the hierarchy. And as soon as I expand down, you immediately see this is different than same period last year, because what's happening here is that that previous year calculation, that function, it's going back to the prior year. Absolutely. But it gets all of the dates from the prior year and it returns whatever that expression is for this use case here. It's total sales. It returns that expression for the entire prior year. It's effectively ignoring the fact that right here in this visualization, I'm at the month level. Right. It's effectively ignoring that fact. It's pretending like I'm not at the month level. It's going back and getting the entire year. And if I go down again and we go down to the individual day level, at which point, unfortunately, I'm going to have to scroll quite a bit to get to 2006 here. You'll notice even at the day level, it's ignoring that filter that's coming from May 2nd and it's going back to the prior year and getting everything. Now, with same period last year, it was smart enough to identify the period you were at. So if you were at the day level, it would go back one year, yes, but then it would bring back the value from that day one year ago. If you were at the month level, it would go back one month and it would get the value for that month. And so same period last year, significantly more, how do I say it, dynamic, right? Automated than parallel period or previous year. Now I keep saying parallel period. What do I mean by that? Well, let's rewrite this expression. Currently this expression right here, you see it at the day level, what it's doing, it's going back to the prior year and it's getting the total sales for that entirety of that year. You can rewrite this expression by using parallel period. So this is just a shortcut. If you remember back to that video, if you haven't seen that video, go back to my YouTube channel, check out the, the video that I did on same period last year, because I do a compare and contrast between same period last year and date add. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to do a compare and contrast between previous year and parallel period. And I don't know if you can really call it a contrast because it's kind of the same thing, but that's what we're doing. And so I'm going to replace previous year with the parallel period function. And you'll notice the definition of this is that it returns a parallel period of dates by the given set of dates and a specified interval. So I'm going to tell it the interval that I want is a year level. So it's going to go back to the prior year. If I say minus one on my number of intervals, it's going to go back to the prior year and it's going to get that set of dates for that entire year, regardless of what the filter context here is. It goes back to the prior year and it gets everything. And so we're going to do parallel period here. The first parameter is our date column from our date table. The second parameter is the number of intervals we want to go back. So I'll say minus one and then we'll do year. Now the value of this right here is that when we're telling it year, we're going back one year, but we could do month. We can do quarter. We can do day. You can also go back multiple years. So whereas previous year or previous month only goes back one month or one year, this could go back a couple of years, right? You could go back multiple years. You can also go forward if you want. And another really cool trick, one that I love, and I use this for semi additive measures um, or percent of totals and ratios is you can actually use zero for the number of intervals, which means that if I were to replace that minus one with zero, instead of it giving me 
my total sales from the prior year, it would actually give me my total sales for the current year, the entirety of the current year that I'm looking at in the filter context. Once again, there's some really cool, innovative and kind of creative solutions you can come up with by understanding that that is something that you can do if you want to. But let's go ahead and hit enter here. And you'll notice that when I hit enter, we're still gonna get 3.266 million in sales. And the reason for that is simply because this is doing the exact same thing that previous year was doing. Now let's take a look at this at the previous month level. There's two ways to write that. Either I can just replace the year with month, which means it'll get all of the dates from the prior month. So we're looking at May, therefore it would go back to April, get all the days from April, 30 days, and then it would recalculate my total sales for that prior month, regardless of the fact that I'm at the day level. So let's take a look at that, right? So we can do that. The number is gonna be significantly smaller here. Let's go ahead and minimize this so we can do some validation. And you'll notice that it's telling me that this month is 673,000. My prior month was 663. And that's what it's showing every day when you're looking at each individual day value. But if we go back to April, you'll see right here. In fact, um, we can just collapse this real quick. We'll go back up a level so we can see this a little bit easier. In 2006, you see right here, it says that it's 663,000. Well, we go back and look at the prior month and that was the actual sales for the prior month. And so that's working perfectly exactly the way that we said. And of course, we know that as we drill down, let's say I drill into May, that all of those values for May of 2006 are reflecting the total sales from the prior month, right? Not at the day level though. So if I wanted to say, when I'm in May, May 15th, I wanna know what the sales were from April 15th of the prior month. This is not the right calculation to get that for you. It's not the right function. We would go back and we would use date add and we'd say date add, pass in your dates minus one month, right? And that's dynamic because that's, go back and watch that video on same period last year in date add. I don't wanna rehash all of that here because I like to keep these videos short, but now that's what that does. So in this example here with prior year total sales, which I just changed to prior month, if we change the name, it does exactly what you might expect it to do. Now let's try one more thing here. I'm gonna do zero, right? We're gonna look at the current year and then I'm gonna do something like year here. So we'll change it back to year, but now we're not getting prior year total sales. We're actually getting, just to make sure this is very explicit, we're getting current year total sales. This is pretty cool. This is gonna get us all of the total sales for the current year that we're currently looking at, uh, which is 2005 or 2006 rather. And that's 6.5 million. So how do I know that's correct for 2006? Well, we go up, right? We go up in our hierarchy here and we go up again. 2005 was our 2006 is 6.53 million. And we see it side by side here. So 2006 is 6.5, that's the total sales and that's what our current total sales. The difference between these two is total sales is the sum of sales amount within the current filter context. So as we drill into 2006, that value changes because the, it's, it's respecting the filter that's now coming from the date table on the month. This one does not, right? This one always gets all of the dates from that period and it returns the total sales for all of those dates. So it is a, effectively, it's ignoring any filters that are coming from the date table because it's getting all of the dates from that year. Now we know, uh, or maybe you don't, maybe you should know that there's other ways. If you're just trying to say, look, I wanna take the month here and I wanna divide the month by the total sales for the entire year so that I can get a percentage, right? So a percent of total, this is one way to do that. This little trick with parallel period and throw a zero in there, this is definitely one way to get that. Uh, I would probably do it a little differently. I'd probably write calculate total sales all except, and then I'd say ignore all the filters coming from the date table except the filter on year. So that's probably the way I would usually write this, but this is definitely sufficient, right? You see right here, it would work. We can create a percent of total calculation and we're in business. Where parallel period really shines, and I'll probably do some videos on this at some point in a three hour webinar I did at Pragmatic Works, go check out their YouTube channel. I talked about semi-additive measures. I don't think I got into blank values though, but where parallel period works great is you can get like the closing balance or the very last balance of like a prior month or a prior year, even when you have blank values. So you can use it in combination with something like last non-blank to go back and get the last closing balance of the prior month. But if the last day of the prior month was let's say June 30th and you didn't have a balance on June 30th because you didn't take a balance, 
it would return blank, right? So what you would do is get all the dates from the prior month using parallel period. Then you use last non-blank to get the last date from that period, which might have been June 29th. And then you return the sales for that. And so it works really great with closing balances, inventory balances, checking account balances, anything that's a semi-additive measure. Um, it works really, really well with that. That's a place where I've used this uh, quite often in the past. But what I wanted to show you in this video, just very quick, was that you can use things like previous year, right? So you have previous year here. And previous year is derived from parallel period. So we'll type back in. We'll type back in that expression right there. And just keep in mind that previous year um, is derived from the parallel period function, but Microsoft has just simplified this for us. So if I come in here and type in parallel period, um, just to kind of emphasize that, that's what previous year comes from, as well as previous month, previous quarter. Those all are derived from parallel period. And what parallel period does is it goes back to the period you specified within the interval that you specified, and it returns all of the dates, irregardless of the filter context. And like I said before, sometimes this is really awesome, and it lets us do some really cool stuff in DAX. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. In a future video, I'll probably do a compare and contrast between the two, same period last year. It's gonna be a showdown versus parallel period versus date add. Let's see what happens. But in this video, I just wanted to do a quick one this week that dives a little bit deeper into previous year parallel period and why it's a little bit different than what we talked about in our last video that we did. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe, show your family and friends. And until next time, enjoy and have a good week.